On August 15th, 2003, I took my very first step into creating the Beautiful Women Project. As a social commentary artist, I was determined to add my voice against the bombardment of messages in our society that say we should alter our body physically, often in ways that are completely unattainable and at best unhealthy for our emotional and physical well-being. I designed the exhibit to be an alternative to the images we see every day all around us in store windows, on billboards and magazines. I wanted to provide a safe environment in which young people could observe and study natural bodies of all shapes and sizes with lumps, bumps and scars. An exhibit to open up a dialogue around healthy living, self-esteem, body as identity and truly realize that self-acceptance is the keystone of a healthy lifestyle. For the first phase of the project, I needed volunteers to allow me to use medical bandage to make plaster casts of their bodies. The casts in turn would become molds for me to make permanent clay sculptures. In other words, to make exact replicas of the women's body out of clay. I had three rules for volunteering. One, you had to be deemed an adult, so over the age of 18. Two, you couldn't be pregnant at the time of casting, as society's messages around pregnant-shaped bodies are very different than post-pregnancy. And three, all surgeries had to have been for medical reasons, not cosmetic. As the volunteers were being cast, I would ask them what made them decide to volunteer for the project. Instead of a simple answer, they shared stories of joy, challenges, and trauma throughout their life and related it back to how this has impacted their sense of self and identity. In the beginning, I had no intention of using any of these stories. It was really a conversation. But as I started to create the clay sculptures, I felt like her personality, her journey, her story that was so integral to her life was missing from the art piece. It was at that moment I decided to decorate each and every one to represent the woman I met and honor her story. From casting my first volunteer to completing my 120th clay sculpture took two and a half years. I barely finished them in time for the very first exhibit. Since 2006, the exhibit has been showcased in 12 communities across Ontario, Canada. In fact, it is estimated that 70,000 people have either seen the exhibit in person or have heard me speak at a formal event. Looking back over the eight years that the Beautiful Women Project was on tour, it is heartwarming to read all the guestbook comments, to reflect on the stories that were revealed, and know the impact the artwork, the exhibit, and the speaking engagements had on the viewer and the listener. However, the impact the project has had on me, the artist and creator, has been quite different. I've become extremely attached to the women behind the sculptures, as well as the physical sculptures themselves. I have given the project all I had to give and more, to the point where I burnt out. Fifteen years from the date that I started the Beautiful Women Project, I'm about to embark on my arts-based thesis. I have to question my attachment to the sculptures and the women and question what it will take for me to consider the Beautiful Women Project as it stands concluded. As I prepare to answer my own questions, I've realized that I've never spent time alone with all 120 sculptures. As I created them, I would wrap them carefully and send them on to be photographed or prepare them for exhibit. Each time they were on display, there were so many people around that I didn't have time to just sit and be quiet with my own work. So, for the foundation of my arts-based thesis, I will spend 120 minutes alone with all 120 sculptures.
found it really difficult to see people opening the crates and taking the sculptures out as a task, one after the other. It's always been such an engaging, emotional, spiritual event. But this time it was practical, task-like, just open one after the other after the other, talking about all kinds of things totally unrelated to the project or these women. Then we had to put them into Rubbermaid boxes with just a piece of paper between them. Some are turned on their sides, some are turned on their heads. They're squished one behind the other, clay scratching on clay. It feels so disrespectful to them. And yet I know this is just how it had to be to make this work. It's also reminiscent of when I first created them, before we had the safety crates, before we had everything in order. I would make one, wrap it in bubble wrap and put it in a recycling bin, waiting until we knew how we'd transport them. But even then they remained upright, carefully packaged, waiting to be delivered. Here, in this instant, clay, clanging on clay, scraping, it was painful to hear. I'm grateful for all the work everybody's doing and I understand why, why they're feeling the way they're feeling, that it's a task and it's a job and we just open one after the other. But I wish we could slow down and take time and reconnect with each woman as she comes out of the crate. Some catch my eye straight away, like meeting a familiar friend you haven't seen in a while. Others, an acquaintance, don't really miss them. But of course you remember them, remember how we met and what we talked about. The garage is quiet now, the drills have stopped, the clay's no longer scraping. The empty crates stacked right to the ceiling. Rubbermaid boxes filled, overflowing, packaging paper strewn all around. Now we wait. They sit and they wait. They'll be loaded into the elevator and box by box taken to the ninth floor, carefully unpacked and laid on a polished granite tile on the ninth floor with the ocean as the backdrop sun beaten down and soon so soon there will be peace and quiet as it will be just me and them it'll be just us just us alone at last to chat the first piece of art has really surprised me i don't like the way it looks but I did realize I like the way it feels and the way it sounds. Sounds aren't normally important to me, but this sound was important to me. The sound of the pastel scraping across the page, the softer ones gliding across the page, crumbling, snapping, breaking, and in kinesthetic, needing to push big waves with my arm, moving my whole upper body across the page, swirls, jarring movements across the page until my arm can't reach. More swirls and swirls and swirls. I trusted my body to choose the colors. I don't like the colors. I trusted my body to draw the shapes. I like some of the shapes, but overall I do not like the look of this art piece. But I know it's authentic. I felt the tears come. I felt anger. There's a lot of anger. Just kept sensing that what was supposed to be so beautiful has become overshadowed. Or was it at the root that the anger was there? More like the root. For me, this one is the sound and the feelings, the kinesthetic feelings, as well as the emotional feeling. Anger, a lot of anger. Art piece number two, I surprised, I was very surprised. And my body needed to move so much my whole body moved. I drew on the floor and I'm out of breath. The graphite sticks are hot. The same spiral, clockwise, 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 over and over and over again. I still don't like what it looks like. And I'm angry. I'm sad. It's ugly and it's frightening. I so badly wanted it to be beautiful. Through the spirals, you can see the marks of the hardwood floor underneath. 
sharp contrast vertical lines against the horizontal oval disruption Today is the first time in 15 years I've been alone with all 120 sculptures, 120 women. Why have I not before? My head says it was always too busy. There was always too many people. My heart knows I was frightened of what they'd have to tell me. Frightened of what I'd feel. Unsure of how to start and overwhelmed with emotions, I felt compelled to connect with each and every sculpture, or should I say woman. Then I was immediately struck by the realization that I had a message for each and every one. So I took the time to stop at each sculpture and share my message. Oh, invasive beauty. Me and still me. Yes, invasive beauty, you're beautiful. And you're still alive. All these years later and you're still alive. I wish you could live forever. I've never quite remembered your title. I have belly dancer. Kind words. We didn't really get to know each other that well, did we, kind words? But you taught me a lot. Felt with the heart. Some powerful lessons there. Show me that anything's possible. You don't need to see to feel. You felt wholeheartedly. And you're so missed. Butterfly faps her wings misses you so much. Butterfly flaps your wings. I gave you a long title, hey? But you really do. The ripple effect goes on and on with you. Your kindness. Your joy, your beauty. Dreams are guides to be followed, and boy, you finally following yours. So proud of you. At times I found myself needing to apologize for feelings that I had had that I had not yet expressed, or for actions or inactions I'd taken over the last 15 years but I also had to express my gratitude for all their involvement in my project and the support they provided me. Oh, belly drummer, you are so missed. Playful's in Alaska right now. Sorry, I didn't stay in better contact when you were alive. I was always too busy, yeah? I was always too busy. Goddess. Oh, you give me such strength, Goddess. and to simply acknowledge all the lessons each woman had taught me. Sometimes the women had no idea that they had become my teacher. Candy camouflage. I have been known to candy camouflage, but you already knew that. But I'm also learning to feel the pain and show the pain. I don't always have to smile. It's okay to be sad. 
just like all your clients, we do what we do when we do it. We do the best we can. You taught me laughter, you taught me joy. And now, I'm not therapist. And I think of you so often. <sighs> Giver of light. I try to do the same. I just don't know who God is. There's the spiral on your belly. God in the air. So many have passed away. There's always more beneath the sea. What is it that we're not seeing in people? What is it we're not understanding? What is it there's more to see all the time? <laughs> it's on your belly I discovered I was dyslexic. <laughs> but I know you don't mind. Mm. Oh, love life. Mm. Love life. <laughs> you won't be cold today, love life. Your daughter passed before you. You're so fragile, it's warm. <laughs> Tell me something about yourself. Love life. It's a very good message. And then there's me. <sighs> Body image is not black and white. Hmm. Wow. The white side of you is so cool, and the black side so hot. Even there's a contrast. You look so different now. There's another scar, even bigger, that I lived. The belly still sticks out. A little belly button. Now you have a puppy with the same issue. You were right. Body image is not black and white. It's so complicated. When I look at little me, I get flashbacks of freezing rain and the sculptures being loaded for the first time. I was so scared for you all. What would happen to you all? After all, I made extras that none of you are just extras. You're all so important. You're all so important. I see us at the first exhibit. We were sliding down the walls. <laughs> oh boy. I moved so fast. Am I protecting you or am I protecting me? so much grief.
Why does it all mean so much? you back into the spiral. You don't have to be different from everybody else. You can be connected, you can be part of it. You don't have to hide in the spotlight. Just be you. Those beeps mean there's going to be an explosion in a minute. so hard for so long. Little spirit. That was the explosion. Then it was time to hear what messages, if any, the sculptures, or the women behind the sculptures, had for me. I decided to start with Love Life, who was my oldest volunteer. She was 91 when she volunteered. Is that my message, Love Life? Be comfortable that the leaves fall regrow keep the fawns for protection <laughs> but don't feel trapped bloom to your fullest and you have many lives left to live have faith in healing be loyal reach your fullest potential <laughs> take a shield of courage have strength in yourself reflect Raku, just joy. Have clarity. Find clarity through your interaction with others. The sun will rise and the sun will set. Spoken words, speak up, Geraldine, speak up. And don't let your colors fade. Be the helping hand and smile inside and out. I can't do it alone, can I? I need a community. And don't take first glance, there's always so much beneath. You can swim up to dream if you're meant to, and you can soar through the skies with wings. Be the holder of the light, and be the giver of the light. Taker of the pain. 
<laughs> life, embrace it. The more I was able to open up and truly listen, the more the messages flowed and expanded. At first, I thought I was just reading my own titles and the messages on the clay sculptures, but it wasn't true. The messages flowed from somewhere much deeper. Even when nobody remembers your name, remember who you are. Each step of the journey has shaped your identity. It's now time to embrace it. Unveil the pain, heal the pain, accept what can't be healed. Love is the discovery of yourself. It's time for recognition. <laughs> you don't have to be an advocate to accept and help and love others. Providing a safe and comfortable home does not necessarily mean people live with you. You don't have to be everything to everyone. Just be who you are, how you are. Always remember a shield deflects more than just pain. Know when to hold up the shield and know when to lay it down. Goddess, be the goddess. Little me, can I come back to you, little me? Dream, it's what happens in the quiet that can be just as noisy in your life. <laughs> it's a gamble, huh? Love and acceptance, I have it for so many others, but do I have it for myself? Larger than life. You're right, I don't have to be larger than life. I can enjoy the bright colors and the community that I have without standing out in a crowd. Yes, myself has emerged. Sometimes it will go away again, but sometimes it's emerged. <laughs> Playful, I'm trying. I painted your sculpture as a way of rewarding myself. But I still don't play very often. I know, I need to play more often. And to hear the music of my own soul, especially my belly. My love of hummingbirds. Yes, I'm a birth mum and it hurts. Mm, I am a childless mother. I will be true to myself. Knowing my body and soul, even if I can never remember the chakras. Honoring the trauma, honoring the healing. Finding footsteps, making footsteps in all directions. Help people recover memories, help them create them. I've created memories, I've recovered memories. It's time to create new ones. I've taken risks, but I'm not living life fully yet. Simplicity, hmm, it's not really me, but it is beautiful. I forget to watch the shadows dance. Let them stick. All my dots over the years and all my stars. There's no point having too many stars. I don't need to cover up the dots. Well, that's an important one. I've been working so hard to get the stars to cover up the dots. To accept myself. Oh, to accept myself is to accept God. Really?
Hmm. Accept myself is certainly a good start. As the wind blows, I never did straighten you. You don't need straightening. All oh, right, this is about me. Yes, I feel the pain in my back. I feel the weight of it all. I won't break. But I do have to bend, don't I? And I haven't been bending. I've been so rigid about it all. Rejoice. I may not have a mother, a grandmother, an aunt to rejoice in, but I can rejoice in myself. Me and still me. I am the same me that I was 15 years ago. Things have changed, time's passed, but I'm still me. I'm just more me now. Be complete. Bring all the pieces of you together and enjoy the completeness. See beyond today. See the future. Experience it all and go beyond. I am still me. I am me then. I am me now. Things have happened. I have lived experiences. But I am still me. More scars. More lumps and bumps. But I'm still me. I'm amazed how kinesthetic all this process has been. Everything from pushing soft pastel across hard paper and rough textured paper, needing to push as far as my arm could reach, in jarring movements, in swirls, to feel and to hear pastel going across the page. To have my whole body involved in the scale of the paper, pushing and pulling and turning. Then to graphite, working it so hard and so fast that it heats up. Almost burning my fingers to feel the heat of the patio, the hot pink granite under the sun, through the soles of my sandals, my hands on the clay that heated in the sun. This time the graphite warmed from the sun, so warm it almost acts as paint on the page. To feel the heat temperature of my body get into boiling point. To work in my body so much, every part of it aches. My ribs, my head, my hands, my feet. From the lifting and the carrying and the moving and the process and the heat, the drawing grounding myself by turning my neck until the pain of a stiff neck kicks in and reminds me I'm here, I'm present. But being gentle enough on myself to release it once its grounding work is done. The spirals, the leaves and the spirals again. The walking around the spirals pausing and stopping to talk to each woman, reaching down to connect physically with their bellies of some. Walk 
walking and walking and walking, moving in the same spiral, clockwise, anti-clockwise, starting from the center out, starting from the out, going to the center. This movement was so important to the process. that as I draw my leaves I'm giving myself permission to just draw what I love to draw. I love that the graphite is hot and soft. This ground underneath it is causing my hands to overheat. And the tile floor is catching my pencil. The graphite is so smooth. My head is saying how wasteful it is to do such an ugly, simple doodle on a beautiful piece of paper with a stunning piece of graphite. My body is saying I'm allowed. I'm allowed to just enjoy myself. I'm allowed to just enjoy myself. I don't have to be so responsible. I don't have to be so dramatic. I can just enjoy myself in any way I want. I do not need to punish myself. I do not have to stand out in a crowd. I don't have to hide in the spotlight. I don't have to be serious, dramatic one all the time. I can just have fun. I can just love life. been this person. As a little girl, I was this person. I didn't have to become this person. So what's next? What is next? <gasps> As I just stepped on one of the sculptures, I realized my fear of them breaking and my protection is still just as strong. Why is that? Why? Are you my clients? You're my clients. You're my clients, not my friends. I care about my clients. I worry about my clients. 
and hold the space for my clients. But I don't keep up with my clients. I do from a distance. But we are not friends. You are my clients. How does it change things if they're my clients? Or was I their client? Am I their client? Are they my client? Are we siblings all trying to figure it out? No, we're not related. Are we a community of women trying to figure it out? No. You provided me your story and your form and I created you into permanent sculpture. So we're not equal, but we're not unequal. Ah, as you sit before Buddha. Little me is right in front of Buddha. Buddha's laughing and happy, Buddha's in the moment. I'm so in the past. Buddha is in the moment. My sculpture doesn't feel like me. Messages from the other women are stronger than the messages from me. But when I look at my sculpture and I visualize me 15 years ago, there's a stronger connection. I need your permission. I want your permission. What's next? We came together for a purpose and I've tried to keep us together. You came together for a purpose and I tried to keep us together. For 15 years I've tried to keep us together. But some of you have died. Some have moved on. Relationships come and gone. But I've tried so hard to keep you together. But it hasn't been for you, has it? It's been for me. A family, a community. I've always wanted a family. I've always wanted a community. I tried to keep you together, so I had that. But we had our time together. You came together for me, and now I see beyond. We worked on a project together, and now the project is over. We don't need to be together anymore. We can celebrate each other as individuals. We came together for a reason. We came together to explore together, to teach together, to learn together. We became a community on a community project. And like all projects, there has to be a transition an ending of one thing and the beginning of something else. We don't need to be together anymore. We will always have this time. We need to be free to celebrate and understand ourselves as individuals. We are individuals, 118 individuals. <laughs> Coho marks the end. It is time to love life and set free.
for he. The giver of light, the holder of spirit, and set free the pain. This project is finished. It is now going to be different. Thank you. Thank you for making me who I am. Thank you for being on this journey with me. Thick, heavy-bodied paper, large format. I never give myself permission to use this. I also don't give myself permission to use the beautiful collection of inks that I have. I always provide them to my clients and never limit their use. But I do prevent myself from enjoying them. My body is so sore that even though I wanted to create the same spirals, and I was able to, they're much more gentle the ink doesn't join up. And although the spirals are just as big, the application of the media is gentle on my body. It's more of a flow than an energy that needed to get out. I allowed my body to choose the colors and then gently made the swirls and let the color fall where it wanted to. Then I took some of my favorite yarn and made some swirls with the yarn through the ink. Then I took a little piece of cotton and was excited to see it jump on and off the page, creating flick marks, interrupting the spiral. This piece makes me feel much more calm and relaxed. I started out with the vision of the rose from Love Life and Rose of Hope and Rose of Truth. A rose I've drawn for years and years and years. And as I started it, I allowed my eyes to gaze over and just let the lines follow along the page. Of course, the leaf design had to come in there as well. It's such an old familiar and then the spirals returned, but this time smaller, circling around both clockwise and anti-clockwise, whereas up until now, every spiral I've created has been clockwise. This was a really fun, playful piece. The Beautiful Women Project started on August 15th, 2003. On the 15th anniversary, August 15th, 2018, it was time for me to question my attachment to the women and the sculptures. I also wanted to know what it would take for me to officially conclude the Beautiful Women Project as it had been. As I'd never spent any time alone with all 120 sculptures, I decided that I would have an exhibit for one hosting it in the most unusual space on a penthouse patio, not having the sculptures hung on the wall that they had been traditionally, but instead laid on the floor, described by one as shells, empty shells. With the ocean as the backdrop and the sun beating down, the sculptures were laid out in a spiral. I wasn't sure what would happen during this performance piece, so I decided just to trust the process. Once the space was set up and everybody left, I was surprised at how emotional I became. I realized it wasn't that I was too busy in the past to spend time with my sculptures alone. Rather, I was fearful of spending time with them alone. I feared what they would say. I feared what I would learn about myself. 
as I took my place in the spiral and looked around. I was overwhelmed and not sure of what step to take next. I decided to simply reconnect with each woman, to walk around the spiral and reintroduce ourselves. It was remarkable. Some of the sculptures I'd never really talked to before, I'd never really connected with, had the most to say. As I introduced myself to the women, or the sculptures, I wasn't quite sure which, I was surprised to find out how much I had to tell them. To thank them, to apologize, to wish them well, to explain, to justify, to grieve. Although I had recorded this phase and every word was captured, I felt it was far too personal to make public. When I had finished introducing myself, I knew it was time to then ask if they had a message for me. And each one did. Messages poured from each sculpture. Some of the messages made me laugh, some made me cry, some really surprised me. But they all had a message for me, and there was a common theme. I learned that I have avoided spending time with the sculptures, and it was out of a fear of what I would learn. Now I have listened and confirmed my fears. I wanted a family, my own community. I created the Beautiful Women Project without truly understanding that I was actually trying to create a family for myself. Over the past 15 years, I've worked so hard to keep this family together, all 120. I have retold their stories, I have nurtured them, I have protected them, and yet I have been so tired in doing so. Many of the women had stayed in touch. Some just came by to be cast. Some come to see their sculptures over and over again. Some shared their story with the media, and some have become great friends. But for some reason, I was unable to keep all 120 together. I set up rules about how they to be exhibited. I set up rules about how they should be stored and cared for. I had set up an imaginary fantasy family of 120 sisters, mothers, aunts, grandmothers, daughters. I realized in talking to the sculptures and conversing with my own that I had been angry for a very long time. I was angry that I was the only one of this 120 family trying to keep us all together. I described the exhaustion as trying to gather up goop. The more I held it tight, the more it poured through my fingers. The more I pushed it all together, the more it poured apart. I didn't understand until the exhibit for one and then each of the 120 shared their message and helped me realize they came to the Beautiful Women Project to support me, to be a part of a project, a project that at some point would come to an end, to support a cause of self-acceptance, to support a vision of an artist that was going to exhibit their sculptures and share their message. They came for a reason and then they moved on with their lives. Some an hour after I met them, some a few years after I met them, some have even passed away. But I was not ready or willing to accept this. I was determined to keep this family together. That's why my attachment has been so strong. I have enmeshed myself to these women, represented as sculptures, to 120 that have moved on, had their own lives, continue to have their lives and most often those lives do not include me. I've been so fearful of letting them go. I've avoided phone calls, emails, social media messages. I get excited to hear that there's something happening in their life, but somehow I'm angry and upset that I'm not included in that aspect of their life. I realize then that my relationship with the 120 sculptures differs from the 118 women that are involved in the project. I could keep control over the sculptures I could keep them all close. In fact, I keep them all in my home, but I cannot keep the 118 women close. I don't have any control over their lives and nor should I. More than anything, they are not my family. I have been trying to hold together a fantasy family for 15 years. And it is here today at the exhibit for one, they all kindly and gently and lovingly let me know we are not family. As we laugh together, cry together, and they so gently help me see that we are not family, that they came together for a reason, to love, to support, and to help this project 
share its message of self-acceptance, but never did they commit to staying together, never did they commit to becoming my family. They also helped me realize that I have a family, that I am loved, that I have a community that is important and powerful, that I have all I need, and that my anger perhaps should be called grief for what I didn't have, for what I needed, and that I should honor how hard I've worked at creating a family. But more importantly, I should honor that they are individuals and that I am individual from them. And to move forward, to be able to release what was, I need to accept that these 120 amazing women gathered together for a purpose, for a project, and it is now time to end the project. That doesn't mean I will get rid of the sculptures. That doesn't mean that there won't be another exhibit. But internally, I have to conclude the Beautiful Women Project as my family. And to move forward, I need to honor each of the women, their stories, and their commitment to the Beautiful Women Project. But I need to do it in a way that honors the individual and that honors me, my time, and my emotional needs. I aim to take each sculpture out into the environment for us to take a walk and to talk more, to get to know each other differently and be able to create videos and photographs honoring that woman, her sculpture in an environment that best suits her. I will not set myself a deadline for this. I will not commit to how many I will complete. I will not try to create another family. I will simply honor the women, honor myself through the medium of art that has been so healing to me for all these years, and today has offered the greatest and deepest healing of all of helping me see that the fantasy family I've created needs to be released. I can take the love and support from it, but to make myself stronger and to respect the wishes of the women as they started this project with me, I will honor them as individuals.